Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast episode for March 24th, 2024, uh, which is Palm Sunday, or perhaps you call it Passion Sunday. Uh, we are uh, entering into Holy Week uh, with this podcast, of course. Uh, and so we backtrack a, a chapter two from where we were last week. Uh, we're going back to Mark uh, chapter 11 to talk about uh, Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. But then we are also suggesting uh, another story uh, just a couple chapters later, um, the anointing at Bethany uh, in the house of Simon the leper. Uh, so that's Mark chapter 14, uh, verses 3 through 9. Uh, and we want to bring this up because this text uh, does not, uh, uh, or at least uh, parts of this text don't show up in the Revised Common Lectionary. Uh, so um, we encourage you to uh, read both texts. Perhaps, uh, perhaps you just want to preach on one, uh, but to, to read both. So Jesus uh, entering into Jerusalem, let's, uh, let's begin with that. Uh, uh, this is uh, comes after um, um, Jesus' uh, predictions of uh, of his death, uh, uh, stories like the Transfiguration uh, and the uh, request of James and John to uh, to be first in the kingdom of God, and then uh, the various healings that Jesus does. Uh, but here, then, uh, coming to the Mount of Olives, uh, Jesus sends two of disciple two of his disciples and says to them to bring a uh, donkey, uh, a young donkey, to him to come uh, into Jerusalem. Uh, and it looks like the entry of a king, right? Uh, people throw their cloaks uh, on the road in front of the donkey. Uh, they spread uh, branches that they've cut uh, in front of Jesus. And they uh, quote, uh, is it Psalm 116 or 118? I should have looked that up. Uh, I think it's 118. 118. Uh, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Uh, and then he enters Jerusalem. So what is there to say about uh, that entry into Jerusalem, this uh, hailing of Jesus as uh, the son of David uh, and uh, this praise of Jesus as he comes in? To the city. That's an excellent question. Uh, and I think uh, in um, the pattern of what we've been reading here, um, the celebration, uh, the grandeur of the um, uh, noting of putting Jesus in this position of authority and power uh, is based on um, the things that Jesus has done in the authority of his teachings that. Um, sideline the enemy. And it's exactly the opposite of what's going to be in just a few days um, when the true agenda of Jesus is, is clear. And that is, uh, as he has told his disciples, uh, you're going to watch me suffer. Mm -hmm. um, that it, it's, and, and so um, what we have here is the people uh, excited to put Jesus up on this pedestal and thinking that's the victory uh, and not realizing that what we need is a savior. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jesus has come to be that savior. And that's what Hosanna means, right? Originally, uh, it's uh, from Psalm 118 again. It means save save us or save now. Save uh, us. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe they don't know uh, what they're saying, but and maybe they do, right? Save us from what? Save us from the Romans? Maybe save us from um, oppression. Uh, in the end, of course, Jesus saves from sin, death, and Satan uh, more than what they ask for. Well, it's a recovery of, of um, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about uh, uh, the commandments. Um, what is it that is the true worship of God? Mm. Um, it, it's not the rituals. It's not the positioning. It's not the prosperity. It is loving God and loving neighbor. And Israel was 
a chosen nation for the sake of all the other nations. You've heard me say this before, that Genesis 12, that promise uh, that David is the ancestor of Jesus, but the ancestor of David is Abraham and Sarah. And that promise that is made to the descendants of Abraham and Sarah has always been for all the world. And so when we forget that what God is doing is restoring creation and all humanity, then we think it's just about one nation over another. And for too long, the uh, empire's been over Israel, and they thought that their savior would just be a great king, a great leader. And God has never forgotten brought God's promise that was given to Abraham and Sarah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's really striking to me in uh, the the part of the reading from chapter 11, the triumphal entry, is uh, how saturated it is with royal imagery. Uh, through the, if you think all the way back through Mark, um, Jesus introduced, or the gospel is introduced uh, in verse one of chapter one, is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But then the term Christ, the royal term Messiah, doesn't occur again until eight twenty-seven, um, and it's largely royal imagery is largely missing from. Uh, the Galilean ministry of Jesus in Mark. Uh, and the question is, who is this? Uh, and then that absolutely flips the script now that you get to chapter 11. Uh, it's You're bombarded with royal imagery from Jesus riding in on the donkey, which is reminiscent of Solomon's entry uh, to uh, the uh, all the language around the cult and to the shouting in, in uh, the quotation of, Psalm 118, which then continues, blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our ancestor David, which is not from Psalm mm -hmm. 118, right. and uh, and from spreading the cloaks and leafy branches. This is, I mean, there's a hint of uh, Hellenistic background here that were, uh, important figures, uh, when they approached a the town, the town would turn out for them. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's really heralding Jesus here as son of David, the Messiah. I do think it's really important that we take a look at chapter 14 and uh, yep. the second reading, verses 3 through 9. Uh, and uh, my uh, my interpretation of this text, uh, Catherine's already said, um, you get the irony in, in verse 9, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. And I think it was Elizabeth Johnson who has a book in remembrance of her says, it wasn't until she got to seminary that she even read this text because this text had never been read and it do it doesn't occur in other lectionaries. So we're, uh, we're really happy to have it here. And she's really the first, if Mary Magdalene is the first, um, is the, uh, is the first preacher of the resurrection. This woman is the first preacher of the crucifixion uh, mm -hmm. of the theology of the cross, because mm -hmm. what she does is she anoints Jesus for her, for his death and then you get the great irony that um, that the disciples don't like it, and you get this great line, which is you'd much rather have this line: "Why was this ointment wasted? This could have been sold and the money given to the poor, right?" Which I think in a different gospel is then put in Judas's mouth. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, here I think yeah. it's just the disciples. But um, the great yeah. contrast between she sees what's coming and understands the costly nature of Jesus' sacrifice, and she honors that costly sacrifice in an appropriate way. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really important story. Just a quick note uh, of correction so we don't get emails. Uh, it's Elizabeth Schisler Fiorenza uh, that writes. Oh, there you go. Not, I had the Elizabeth uh, right. I yeah, you got Elizabeth. Thank for the you. correction. Very, very Thank important uh, uh, feminist biblical uh, interpreter. Uh, interpretation. Yeah, yeah, interpretation in memory of her. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the um, that that balancing uh, uh, by reading uh, this uh, scene from chapter fourteen of what it is to think that Jesus is going to come in as um, uh, a a a king with all the markings of of worldly power, and this woman recognizes the promise of God that is in Jesus suffering and prepares him for that. Um, that contrast 
uh, I think you use the word irony, uh, is very present here. And I appreciate reading these two texts in juxtaposition so that we can recognize those, uh, those two distinctions of what Jesus' um, uh, ministry and death actually mean for us. That um, that extravagance of the gesture is always what strikes me in this story, right? It's this alabaster jar, very costly ointment of nard, and she doesn't, you know, she doesn't just kind of dribble a little bit on his head. She <laughs> breaks open the jar and pours the ointment on his head. I just imagine the the scent of. 10,000 gardenias filling the room, right? I mean, I don't actually yeah. know what nerd smells like, but this <laughs> extravagant scent, right? Uh, dripping down over uh, Jesus' hair and head and down onto his clothes. Th- this kind of extravagance is what, um, uh, you know, the disciples uh, scold her about, right? Well, she, this is this is ridiculous. Why are you wasting this money? And yet I think as you as you already as both of you already said, right, this she is a um a prophet of the crucifixion or a, 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 a witness to the crucifixion. And it's that same kind of extravagance that Jesus shows on the cross, right? The 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 jar broken open, got uh, uh, God's body, Jesus' body broken on the cross, uh, with love and blood poured out. Uh, in this extravagant, uh, extravagant love uh, that God has for the world, right? It's uh, her gesture, I think, um, gives us a foretaste of the extravagance of God's love on the cross, that self-giving love. So jar broken, body broken uh, for the sake of the, for the sake of the world. And poured out. And poured. I, I do say, I love um, C.C. Winan's um, Alabaster Box and the song that she does, it's just a, a beautiful acknowledgement of um, you don't know the cost of what his love has done for me. Mm. And, and, and so the words are, uh, I've come to pour my praise on him. Um, it, it, it's, it's just a beautiful uh, interpretation of uh, someone who would take something so costly to say thanks mm. uh, because you, you, you need to know what he's done for me. Mm. Uh, it, you, you, you would understand that this is, this, is, this is a small gesture in comparison to what he's done for me. And, and in, in essence, if we understand the broken body and the extravagant love of God that is demonstrated, as she said, on the cross, um, this 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 loses its um, its its value compared to what God has done for us in Christ.